Hello, it's Kim and Storytime Soap Shop. Uh, we are getting ready to make our uh, one of our Halloween fragrances. This is a, a spiced cranberry soap. I've got my lye water and oils at room temperature. So let's get started here. Bubbles out. Yeah. Okay, now that that's good and emulsified, I am working today with a fragrance I've never used before. So we're going to put the fragrance in at the end just to be careful because I don't know if it's going to thicken up my batter or rice. So I'm going to divide it up, uh, put some in these two containers. Looks good. Am I too close? I feel like I'm right on top of this thing. You are right on top. That's why I was backing up. Okay. And that looks good. Just get these started a little bit with the spatula to scrape what's off the bottom. I have my micas mixed with a little bit of oil. And this is really red mica. And this is a mixture of Candy Apple Red and Purple Vibrance Mica. And into the big pot, I'm going to add a little bit of titanium dioxide, which can and usually does thicken up your batter a little bit, but we're going to be okay with that. And a little bit of gold mica, which I've mixed up with oil. We'll get that mixed in. Okay, now with when you're using titanium dioxide, it's important to take a spatula and scrape down the sides and bottom to make sure it gets all incorporated. So we're going to do that real quick and give it another stick blend. One of the reasons I work with room temperature oils is because it does keep your batter runnier longer, which can prevent some of the ricing issues that you can get with some of the fragrance oils. Now this does have a little vanillin in it, so it will discolor, so we tried to use a little colors that would combat the discoloration a little bit. And we always go from lightest to darkest colors. Got a quick whiz. And the final one. Oh, got some air bubbles in there. Now we'll move down to the molds. Okay, so we're going to put the creamy gold color in the bottom. And put a fair amount in each one. And then we're going to come in with our custom purple color here. And pour it in from a little bit high so that it mixes in pretty nice with the drop swirl. And the fragrance oil is working lovely at keeping everything nice and thin. Down. And the other one. And we're gonna come back with our first color and go over it again and a 
final pass with the red. And any good self-respecting soaper is going to scrape out her bowls. Let's get every good amount of soap out of the containers. And finally, we'll do the same thing with the purple. And now, I'm actually going to leave what little bit of white I have left, because we're putting a piping on this one, so I will put it in the center so that we don't overflow our soap molds here. In the meantime, let's get our piping mixed up. Okay, once again, I have my room temperature oils, and I'm going to add my lye water in. Now, this time, because my piping is actually going to be colored, I put the mica in there ahead of time. All right, now we're going to give it a blend. And with my piping, I tend to blend it a little bit longer than I do just my regular soap because I want this to thicken up and come to a nice thick trace like pudding. The cranberry fragrance that I'm using smells a lot like a lot like fall or Christmas. It's got a clove and cinnamon and cranberry scents all mashed in together. It smells very much like fall. Okay, and you can see that unlike the batter that I mixed up before, this is a little bit thicker. It's more like pudding that you're just waiting to stick into the fridge. So we'll be back when it's ready to pipe. All right, we are ready to pipe this baby. You might be able to see, although my mold's a little messy, I've got this marked at one inch intervals, and that tells me where my piping should go. And this is thickening up pretty fast. I'm going to have to move here, so you'll have to pardon me if I don't chat a whole lot right now. All right, we went ahead and made these cute little embeds, which I will be sticking on here now. Now, I wouldn't recommend touching and getting your hands anywhere near soap without gloves, 
unless you've been doing this for quite a while because lie burns are not pleasant. But we've got, flip this around. We've got these cute skull and crossbones and little ghosties to go on top of the soap just in time for Halloween. And we're going to give it a little dusting of glitter, which Jordan absolutely hates when I use glitter in the shop because it's everywhere and she goes home sparkling. But, you know, can't have soap without glitter. So we'll be back in a few days to cut into this baby and we'll show you what it looks like inside. Okay, we are back with our spiced cranberry soap. Now it's still a little soft, but we're going to go ahead and cut the first loaf. Jordan's going to be very careful how she sits it on there. Go ahead. I'm just looking. Oh, is it set for an inch? Yeah. You just got to watch the embeds. Sorry. <laughs> and that is the inside swirl for the spiced cranberry. Mm, that really held it sent up too. This over in the drying tray. And this is the loaf, as you can see, where we are going to have a few bars that are not high top for people who don't want them because, you know, we ran out of topping. And all the time I've been doing this, even I short, short it sometimes. And here's another one. The gold is showing up just a little bit, but you can definitely see the cranberry colors. Here's another one. You can see the nice gold color along with the cranberry and the cute little, oh, I got it backwards, embeds on top. So these will be ready um, in October. We'll post on the Facebook page when they're ready for sale. And thanks for stopping by and watch us make another batch of soap.